I'm just, I'm just speaking as God gives it to me. We're on the cutting edge of change. One of the things that you learn is how to control your tongue. As they are. Somebody at the door. And he said, I would come home and I would have all of that inside of me. And I would start arguing and fussing with my own wife. And he said, I realized I need to stop doing family law. I had about eight to 10 cases at that time. I said, well, thank you, Lord. Guess how many I got now? One. Because you got to have a grace to do certain things. Response ability. Response, your ability to respond. Your ability to respond. Your ability to respond to change. Your ability to respond to negativity. Your ability to respond to positivity. Your ability to respond to transition. And see, I'm convinced, and I'm, I'm getting to my notes now. I'm convinced that we have taken on mindsets that's not biblical. We say things like failure is not an option. That sounds good. But did God say that? And that's why you pressure yourself to be so perfect and you think that you're in control of your own life and you don't see your need for God. Until you possibly fail and can't get up. Now I need God. After, after I realize, after all the pain, after I've gotten into the most terrible accident in the world, and I can hardly speak, and I say, Jesus, help me. Why does it take us to get to our very bottom before we realize we need the one that created us in the first place? See, maybe if we change our mindsets, we can begin to take on the kingdom mentality and understand that failure is an option, but that's why I have Jesus Christ. Because he redeems me from my failure. Y'all believe that? You see, if I continue to operate in my own strength, there's only so much that I'm going to get done. I'm just one man. I only have a certain amount of strength. And guess what? I just told you I'll be 44 in March. That's six years from 50. Still young, but I'm not getting younger. And so I have to come to the realization and you that maybe we need to realize our need for God even for our next breath. Because without him, I can't even breathe. I do need God. It was him who woke me up this morning. It was him who gave me the strength. It was him that gave me strength in my limbs and in my arms and gave me the eyes to see. I didn't do this. I didn't have the, the scientific mechanism the, 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 the ability and the intelligence and the ingenuity to actually create a human being. A clone is not a human being. An AI robot is not a human being. Only God can do that. And the reason they are able to do it is because they have tapped into who God is, but they still can do the original. Because the one thing they can't do is give somebody a spirit. The Bible says he breathed into, him, into them the breath of life. AI ain't getting to God's breath. Man can't give you God's breath. Only God can do that. There are some things that man can't do.
And see, the enemy loves to create a counterfeit. Because he likes to be in control. He wants to make you think that he's God. So you can trust in him. But never will I trust in man. Now, 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 let me, let me go back here. Let me, get, let me give you something here. Let me make sure I give you some scriptures before you get out of here. Let's go to Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. The Bible says this in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. No, no, let's, let me back up to 22. Like, I like 22. This, this, this goes right with what I was saying here. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in man. Huh? Have faith in who? Have faith in God. Not in man. Have faith. If you're going to put your faith anywhere, it must be in God. We have to understand this. You can, you gain knowledge, that's good. God created you to be as intelligent as you are. You can read, you can study. God is still the one who makes it happen. Huh? This, this is why, this is why I give. I continue to give tithes and offerings so that I never trust in men. I never trust in my job. I never trust in clients. My trust is in God. And sometimes when I'm, when I'm lacking, I give more. Just to tell my mind that you're not going to trust in your money. You're not going to trust in your own ability. Watch God. God loves that. You remember the widow woman with the two mites? And, and all these people was giving all these big dollars. Y'all remember that in the Bible? The widow woman with the two mites, right? All these, all these guys are coming in and giving all these big offers, big offers, big offers. She gave all that she had. And Jesus says, she gave. Thou remove and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So, so, so the point that I'm making here is he said, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have for whatsoever he saith. Verse 22 says, have faith in God. Then, verse 23 says, when you face a mountain and you don't doubt, but you, your faith is in the right place, you can speak to that mountain. Not a physical mountain, but a, a, a mountain in your life that you might be facing. An obstacle. And if you have faith in me, God is saying, you can move it. You can move it because you believe. There's no sickness bigger than God. No financial deficit bigger than God. No amount of interest bigger than God. God can do anything to the person that believes. Now, now listen to this. Point number one. Change begins with the new mindset. Change the way you think and talk. Let's go to St. John 2, 15 through 17. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple 
and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overthrew the tables. Now this is Jesus. He walked up in church and he saw a bunch of crooks. And this is how he responded. It, it wasn't the fact that they were collecting money that was the problem. It was the reason why they were doing what they were doing. Amen. You see, I saw a comment on Facebook that said this. It said, take away the preacher's salary and we'll see who's called. See, that sounded good. I saw thousands of comments. I know that's right. 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 So I said, okay. I put in the comment section, money is not a calling issue. Money is a character issue. What do I mean by that? I'm glad you asked. I saw that in your head. I said, Pastor, explain that to me. Let me explain that to you. God, you see, Pastor in a church should never usurp pastoring yourself. Are you with me? See, I got to continue to build my own house before I can build another house. And that's what's wrong with society. We get so caught up in trying to tell somebody else how to live, and we neglect it in our own lives. See, I, I can't tell you that you need to stop doing something if I'm still struggling in the same area. I need to go and adjust that for myself. I can't tell you how to manage money if all I'm doing is trying to collect money all the time. That's a character issue. And people confuse the two. They look at it, oh, well, oh, they take the big step. But they never take the time to really think it out. But you hear what they're saying now. Taja Henson telling you what did uh, what the, my guy that played uh, on what you call it, he told you what he made on that boxing movie. These people don't make as much money as you think. Because everything that you make, Uncle Sam's going to take his percentage. And then you keep whatever you get to have after that after you pay out the expenses. Are you with me? So let me, let me finish up. John 2, 15. Did I read that? So, so, so the Bible says in verse 16, and said unto them, so does. He said, take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house have eaten me up. So what, what am I saying here? I'm saying that Jesus, he sought to break tradition because sometimes we're doing things the same way and we think it's right just because we're doing it and it's not correct. Are you with me? Number two, Matthew 6, 24. The Bible says this. Now, this is, this is going to dig deep now. This is going to dig deep. Matthew 6, 24. The Bible says this. And for my law firm. I've always said that I had to, but I wasn't. Because I kept trying to do a lot of stuff in my own strength. That's how we get burned out. Trying to make our own things happen. Are you with me? 